Okay, so we have our rod, we have our claw, which we fastened with the set screw, that's an Allen key. I will have the right size of Allen key in the description because it is an unusual size. We have our collar here to hold our weight in place, as you can see. If you don't have that little collar, and then that weight will block, create a block between the uh, control box and the claw, and it will just get jammed and uh, it won't allow the claw to set properly on the flip switch. So make sure that that is on, and then we're gonna go ahead and install this. Okay, I went ahead and I dry fitted my setter here, and you're gonna be screwing from the outside into the face, and it's gonna be the smallest hole from the, from the inside, and screw into that. It's gonna be the two middle ones for us on the outside here. Now, I had to get a different screw because the old ones, well, they're so rusty, I actually stripped one of them out. And a regular size screw, like a machine screw, I couldn't find one without a beveled head, like a dome head. So I went and I'm using a screw that has a flat head screw. It needs to be absolutely flush to the two well, this is two prongs that hold it, and then it needs to be flush with the outer plate um, screw stands. So you're going to go ahead and take your plate and it should be, well, I was going to say it should be really easy to get this on, but it's so small and it's so tight that it's even kind of hard with your hands even to get the right fit. So now you're gonna put your face plate on. So take your quarter inch flat head screw and gently, oh, gently install. And I do have something in the back of this box to make sure that I'm not putting pressure on that rod. Or the cylinder, because those are very fragile. Once it's hand tightened, you want to gently pull until it's snug. Okay, so if you install this right, the face plate should look like that. So, The claw is a bit too uh, in, so I'm gonna have to gently pop the set screw out and jiggle it to the front. And then tighten it once again. It's more extended. Like that. Okay. And you can do that by eye, but that's not going to be good enough because we are talking about precision. So I'll go ahead and lean this back. Go ahead and put our stobs. Go ahead and get a go ahead and get a burnt or a uh, complete fired cone and go ahead and get an uh, unfired cone and we're going to do some measurements okay so here i have a cone what i'm going to do is make sure that this is on a flat surface 
I'm gonna go ahead and place the cone as if it's in the kiln. Push that up, push it all the way back. Okay. All right. So it should, the claw should fit comfortably. on that claw and as you can tell perhaps the claw is not even halfway on that lid we need that claw to be halfway widthwise towards the top of that clip switch because right now it's barely hanging on and when that cone melts before it's done with its slump it's gonna drop too soon so, how we double check is getting a burnt cone and seeing where the slump is located. Now, I only uh, use um, really two cones, so I'm going to look at both of the temperatures of the sag that each cone creates. It's a lot easier if you just measure 1 16th, but sometimes even that could be a little wrong, so I like to do both. <laughs> 